Okay then, welcome to our next uh, lesson in the MX Graph. And this is again going to be a rather simple explanation. Uh, but I have to say that behind the simplicity, uh, this took me a couple of days to figure out. So hopefully I can, sh I can save some of those days for you. Um, today we're going to be simply interacting with the database. Uh, now there's of course uh, different ways that you can do this. Um, but I'm going to show you what was applicable in my particular situation. I was using a Django app uh, and therefore I'll be using some of the Django uh, concepts here, but that's not going to make that much difference. Uh, you can apply some of the same ideas uh, to other um, interactions with databases. Now here's what I'm trying to do. I have a, a website um, called Easy One to One. I've added to this website through the database uh, four people who are inspiration. Uh, one of them, of course, is Salman Khan, Sugata Mitra, Daniel Pink, and Sir Ken Robinson. Now, I happen to be the owner of this website, and in this particular case, I am the one who added these people to the website. But there's potentially other users who could add people to the website. And I want to create an MX graph that shows for each user which people they've added. And that's what it should wind up looking like. So there you see Rafi Rosenberg, who is the user, and the four people who I've added, and the relationship between the user and the added people. So here we have our goal. It's going to be a representation that you see right here. Uh, there's going to be a contributor, which is a vertex, contributions, which are going to be vertices, and the relationship between the contributions and the contributor. This is going to happen in three basic simple steps. The first thing we need to do is to actually code the MX graph to make it work right. Then we need to somehow get the data, which I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, uh, because that's going to be very specific to how your data is stored and how you can get the data from where it is stored. And perhaps most importantly is to convert that data into usable XML. So let's get to it. Okay, we're going to start with a bunch of this already coded in because in other lessons uh, you have all this information available. I'll uh, just really go through it very quickly and point out a couple differences because of my particular usage. Um, but then we're going to get to the actual coding. So of course, this load uh, i18n block extra head, all of this is part of my Django language. If you don't understand it, it's not important. Uh, the first thing we always need to do is to set a base path. This is already done here. And this base path is according to my particular setup. The next thing we need to do is to get the MX graph library. And of course, uh, in other lessons, we learned how to do that. And now we have to create our actual MX graph program. Uh, here I've done most of it already. Things that we've already learned in other lessons are already coded into it. Uh, I'm just going to code in the things that are specific uh, that we're learning new today. One of the things I want to do is show you a little bit about a particular layout. If you noticed in the goal that I set up, we had uh, one contributor and underneath that contributor were four contributions. So that is set up by doing what's called the hierarchical layout. Now this is really a very simple thing to do. Again, this is where the brilliance of MX graph comes to play. We're going to create a variable called layout. And all we need to do is get a new MX hierarchical layout that is going to be done on our graph. And that's it. Now we're going to actually update the graph. And you remember that we uh, surrounded this by a begin update and an end update. And we're going to update it with uh, XML content. So the first thing we're going to do is actually get the data. And we're going to do this with an MXUtils 
That's where a lot of the functionality of MX Graph is found, is in the MX Utils. And we're going to tell it to parse XML. Um, and we need to pass it the XML to parse. Um, since this is being done in a the Django application, uh, I'm going to pass it a Django variable. And this particular variable uh, was passed through the original get in the HTML call. Um, and uh, later on, we're going to have to learn how this data is structured and how we are able to pass it. Be that as it may, we now have our data. And we need to decode our data. We do that by creating a decoder. Very simple, again, an MX codec. And we're going to do that uh, onto this uh, specific data, which was uh, set in the variable called doc. Now it needs to know which is the usable data. So we're going to create something we're going to call a node. And we're going to tell it from the doc to get the document element. And finally, we're going to have to actually tell the decoder that we've created to do its job, which is to decode. MX Codex can actually encode, but now we're telling it to decode. And we're going to tell it what to decode, which is the node, the variable node. And we're going to tell it where to decode into, which is graph dot get model. At this point, um, I probably shouldn't have had this typed in already. I'm just going to show you that the layout that we created up here, the variable layout, uh, the hierarchical layout, uh, we need to tell the layout, you know what, let's just erase it and type it in just so you see where we're putting it. We're going to tell Mr. Layout uh, that it should execute. And what should it execute on? It should execute on the parent. That's t telling uh, which part we want to turn it into a hierarchical layout. Uh, in this case, it's the entire parent. Now, if I typed everything correctly, uh, when I reload this, it should work. And as usual, uh, something was typed incorrectly. So let's do a little bit of debugging. Let's start with the web console. And it says that the decoder is undefined. Let's see why that's true. Ah, because we had to tell it to be a new MX codec. Let's try that again. Have a look at that. It worked. Now the next thing we need to do is to see how to create the XML from whatever data that we're getting. What I did is I looked at a XML document that is found inside of the examples that come together with MX Graph. And the document I looked at was the file io.xml. And you'll see here that there are certain things that are absolutely required. And I have to say it took me a little while and then a little help from the a help desk over at MX Graph till I figure this out. Uh, the first thing you need to do is you need to have all of it wrapped inside of an MX Graph model. So you'll have the beginning and of course the end um, of the MX Graph model element. Now that wraps a root element. And there you have the beginning and the end of the root element. And um, then you need to uh, put this, let's say, three levels deep. So first we're going to have an MX cell whose ID is zero. Then we'll have a second MX cell 
whose ID is number one and whose parent is zero. And now we can begin to put all of our new MX cells uh, and these will all be inside of the um, MX cell whose ID is number one. In other words, their parent will be MX cell ID number one. Um, and now these MX cells are made up of different parts. And I think to show you those parts a little better, I'm going to show you the MXL template that I created. So here again we have the MXL. First we have the MX graph model, which surrounds a root, which surrounds our first MX cell, which is going to have ID 0. And that is the parent to MX cell ID number 1, which is going to be the parent for everything that we create. I'm not exactly sure why it has to be that way, but it's written clearly in the documentation that it should be three deep before you start to begin. Now for each MX cell that we create, it's going to have an ID. That's the name of the cell. It's going to have a value that could be simply a string that is going to act as the label or it can actually uh, have a lot more complexity to it as well. Now this particular cell is a vertex and therefore we have vertex equals one. Now that's not a number instead that's a boolean so if it were zero that means it wouldn't be a vertex obviously and being one that means that it is the vertex and here we state which is the parent of this cell uh, and that is of course this MX cell which is the ID number one now to give this cell some uh, dimensions we have to create an MX geometry uh, and that's going to be wrapped with inside of this cell the MX geometry here, because it is a uh, hierarchical view, we're going to give its X position as zero and its Y position as zero because MX graph is going to take care of its positioning. We can give it whatever width we want and whatever height we want, and we need to label it as geometry. And then we close that MX cell. Now, considering that I'm doing this inside of the Django app, I'm able to uh, create wrap this inside of a for statement and uh, for each object inside of data, data contributions I'm going to actually um, fill this MX cell with its uh, information. Now the next thing you'll see here is an edge but even as we've mentioned earlier edges are also MX cells. So this edge is going to be wrapped inside of MX cell. So we have MX cell with an ID. Uh, it has a value. And here instead of vertex equals one, we're going to put edge equals one. It's going to have a parent because it needs to know where it belongs. Uh, it has a source. Uh, and that's where the edge begins and it has a target and that's where the edge ends and it also has a geometry which is going to say what it looks like and about this I'm not exactly a hundred percent sure but uh, it has to be relative one I'm sure that there's other geometries that it can have and it has to be as geometry and that ends the for statement so for our particular data since there were four contributions it's going to create four um, vertices each one with its particular value and ID etc and it's going to create four edges to connect those vertices to the original cell which I'm about to show you here we have once again an MX cell with an ID with a value and again we have to say that it's a vertex and we say that by saying vertex equals one and finally we need to uh, establish which is its parent. Again we're going to give it a geometry 
and we're going to close the cell. Now if you noticed, I've wrapped each one of these lines in a quote, an end quote, and plus. And that is because in order for MX Graph to be able to parse this XML, it must be presented as a string. And by putting each one of the lines inside of a quote and then having the plus sign at the end, when it's passed as a variable into our function, it's being passed as a string. So that's pretty much it. You need to make sure you start off with MX Graph model. You add root, and then we're going to make it two levels deeper, each one being its own cell. And from there, we can start to add whatever cells we want to add. Um, and those cells each need its own geometry. And you pretty much have the idea right there.